Daenerys Targaryen, first of her name, Queen of Marine, Queen of the Andals, and the Rhoynar, and the First Men, Lord of the Seven Kingdoms, Protector of the Realm, Khaleesi of the Great Grass Sea, called Daenerys Stormborn the Unburnt, but what about Sunburnt, Mother of Dragons? Just, just say it out loud, it works. Second, you get it. So you, my lovely followers, follow me on Twitter, have come through me once again, just like the weird, delightful question of whether Wolverine can get a tattoo that you guys sent me a couple weeks back. Twitter at LokiPassDoc has asked me, can Daenerys Targaryen get a sunburn? Well, n n uh, well, if she, let's do it. First, we have to establish that Daenerys is immune to fire. Now, book readers will know, and endlessly complain about, that Daenerys in the books is not fireproof. It was just that one time, because magic. But in the HBO show, it's implied that she is fireproof, emerging naked and completely unscathed from not one, but two complete blazes. To find out if Danny is unburnt or sunburnt, we have to answer a deceptively difficult question. What is it about fire that burns you? If I hold my hand over this very real flame, what about it is going to damage my cells? If I hold it over, hold over, hold over, hold over. <gasps> what fire is, is harder to define than it sounds. I like famed physicist Richard Feynman's answer. This is one after the other. All these things are going faster and faster and snapping in and the whole thing is changing. That catastrophe is a fire. And that catastrophe he's referring to is a release of energy. And it's that energy that burns you. But for it to do so, it has to transfer into your body somehow. And the way that energy gets to you or Daenerys matters. One way fire burns is through convection. And convection is heat flow via liquids and gases. So for example, hot air tends to rise and cold air tends to sink and this distributes heat. Another way is through conduction. And this is what would happen if Daenerys was actually touching some fire, even though that sounds kind of weird. The temperature of something is just the measurement of the kinetic energy of all the particles that make that something up. The faster they are jiggling and bouncing around, the more temperature something has. So if something very, very hot, bouncing around a lot, comes into contact with other particles that are moving more slowly, it increases their kinetic energy on average and their temperature goes up. So if I hold my hand against this jiggling wall of particles, they're gonna increase the speed of my hand's particles and it's gonna increase their temperature until it gets hotter and hotter and hotter until my nerves tell me to remove my hand and like recoil it, like a total recoil. <laughs> Shut up, it's funny. The third way fire can burn you is through radiation. You're all familiar with the electromagnetic spectrum, right? Well, things that are hot put out radiation too, thermal radiation, and this radiation comes out across this entire spectrum, from gamma radiation, to X-rays, to ultraviolet rays, to visible light, to infrared, microwaves, and radio waves. All of these waves can heat you up and burn you, but some more than others. Everything with a temperature can jiggle particles around it, so everything with a temperature emits thermal radiation. However, according to something called Wien's displacement law, where that radiation will fall along the electromagnetic spectrum depends on the absolute temperature of that thing. A campfire, for example, at maybe 1500 degrees Fahrenheit puts out most of its radiation, about 98% of its radiation, in the form of infrared waves, not visible light. That's why even though a fire can get dim, you can still feel its heat from pretty far away. The fires that Daenerys walks through on Game of Thrones would put out similar radiation, conduct heat to her skin, and convect heat up from her feet to her glorious eyebrows. If her skin is immune to all of this, shouldn't it also be immune to getting sunburn? No door. Fire burns you by jiggling your skin's atoms enough to dramatically increase their temperature, but that's not what the sun is doing when it burns you. You're not gonna be getting anywhere near the sun anytime soon, so conduction and convection aren't really the problems here. It's radiation, more specifically ionizing radiation. This kind of radiation has enough energy to knock electrons off of atoms. When this ionizing radiation hits the DNA in your skin cells, it can damage them enough to cause mutations that force the cell to commit suicide or apoptosis. This tissue damage leads to inflammation and increased blood flow, which gives you that characteristic pink pained look that's so fashionable in the summertime. 
So it's not a temperature increase that gives you sunburn, it's radiation damage, a specific kind of radiation that fire isn't going to damage you with. It means that Daenerys' skin is probably immune to atomic excitation and jiggling, but not atomic damage. So the version of Daenerys Targaryen that is immune to fire is not necessarily immune to getting a sunburn. Sunburns are from a different kind of radiation that affects atoms and molecules in a different way, and apparently she's immune to both conduction and convection damage. So the unburnt mother of dragons can get a tan. Where is my science? Oh, there it is. Thank you so much for watching. Do you know what's even more mind blowing to me than why fire is hot, which is still kind of weird? It's when I learned what red hot actually means. So most of what we experience, the heat that those things put out is in the infrared bandwidth of radiation. But when something gets really, really, really hot, that those wavelengths start to push into the visible light range. And what's at the bottom of that visible light range? Red wavelengths of light. So when something is red hot, it's because it's infrared is shifting into the red spectrum and it's, it's, it's emitting red light. So red hot actually comes from physics, even though we kind of just say it. Isn't that cool? So I already did a video on this, but now we have a little bit more information from the show. Uh, you see the dragons open their mouths and when they breathe fire, you see like two little tubes, which makes me think that the actual way, the actual way that dragons breathe fire on Game of Thrones is through hypergolic chemicals. And these are usually two liquids that when they combine, they instantly ignite. So you can imagine like a flamethrower type effect from hypergolic chemicals. And it's not even that uh, esoteric. I mean, we use hypergolic chemicals to power some of our rockets and, and things that we sent up into space. So that's how a, uh, a drogon would work.